Superman and Lois, Season 2, Episode 2. This is how you come back, man. This is how you come back and actually do something really cool for your second season. Because what this is setting up feels like a great continuation of the first season. Like, great character beats, great story elements. I'm really digging this season, and this episode is really cool. Mainly because it just sets up what we're doing going forward. And I think that's really cool stuff because... We're taking a lot of weird chances, and I love it so much. It's so cool to me that Superman is working on television, and that in this Superman show about the Man of Steel, we are getting so much for Lois Lane. Because I am a Lois Lane fan. She is my favorite character, probably in the show, and one of my favorite characters in all of comic books. I love her, and I love the storyline she is getting throughout this show. It's so cool. It all starts in this episode with her struggling to make breakfast because, of course, we saw that Natalie and John Henry have moved into their place temporarily and she wants to make a good impression for Natalie, but she's a vegan and she doesn't really like eating breakfast. So all the sausages and eggs that Lois made, they are just going to go to waste. I think that's really cool. When it opened up, I'm like, oh, is this Lois making breakfast? I don't know how I feel about that because I kind of want Lois to be bad at it. She wasn't great. The, the kids are like, what kind of eggs are these? She's like, a little bit of everything. That's fun. That's awesome. That's what I wanted to see from Lois, and that was really cool. But at that breakfast, too, we get another vision and a head thing happening to Clark, and this is where we start to realize, okay, we, the audience, know it's doomsday. It's pretty much been confirmed. I think there could be a curveball thrown in there that maybe it's not going to be doomsday and it could be somebody else, but pretty much we are saying... This is Doomsday. Doomsday is coming. Something is happening to Clark. And as that's happening, the earthquakes and the tremors are happening too. So there's a connection there. He doesn't know yet. We are kind of ahead of him at this point because we know something is in the ground. So this episode is primarily focused on two sides of a story trying to figure out what's happening with these tremors. The first one we see is Clark getting help from his brother Tal Rowe. And I think it's pretty cool we're bringing Tal back so soon. I, I didn't think we would see him just because I don't really want another Kryptonian story. And I, I don't think it's necessary. But he's like, hey, I can help you. I don't have my powers, so I'm not going to be able to hurt you or anything. So why don't we go to my fortress and we'll talk to somebody that could help us. And the person that they go to talk to is, of course, the hologram of their mother, Lara. And I really like this moment. It's really sweet. And... Tal's a really interesting character, and I completely understand his logic as to why he did the things he did. And the fact that they're not really making him sympathetic, but we can see all sides of it where he's like, I was raised by a monster to become a monster because you couldn't look after me. You only had one son you ever loved, and he stopped me from being the thing that my father made me. It's a beautiful moment. It was a powerful moment that I really enjoyed. I, I, so I just really liked that scene because... I get it. Doing the brother thing with Superman, I don't know if that's the route I would go, but it worked really well in this show. And I think the tension that's been building up the entirety of doing it is working really well. And it just goes into a culmination where Tal was just pretending he didn't have his powers and he gets into a really interesting fight with Jordan. We see that Jordan's powers have been growing and, you know, he's got laser vision. He's holding his own against Tal. It's pretty cool. I like that a lot. It's kind of cool too. Like, We've seen Lara twice on the show now because she was already, you know, she was like controlling Lana in one scene in the first season. Now she's here in another body. That's pretty cool. I think that's really interesting, but that's kind of overshadowed, I think. That stuff's great, but I, again, because I'm a Lois Lane fan, the Lois stuff is what excites me. And I really like the scene where she's talking with John and they're trying to like test out the equipment. Even before that, actually, we get a nice scene where she's talking to like her reporter, Christy, and they're trying to like figure out what's going on at this place. We get Dr. Faulkner, who is kind of this new quote-unquote villain character who's working at the mines, part of Amertech, and Amertech, I think, is going to be... Oh, I could see Amertech being connected to the DOD, like, a, like an offshoot of that, where they're trying to mine the ex-Kryptonite for this guy Anderson. I could see that being the case, too. But basically, she came in to monitor this thing at Amertech when they're trying to get the ex-Kryptonite out. And they know there's some earthquakes coming there. She's not really saying what it is. She does know a little bit because at the end of the episode, we do see that she's talking to somebody on the phone. I think it's Anderson. She's like, whatever's down there is bigger than we thought. I, she's interesting villain. I do like just like her personality and the way she just walked onto the scene. Just loud, happy. 
it was terrifying and it was cool. So I think this Dr. Faulkner is going to be a cool character to follow. I really like her there, and that was really fun. There's more stuff with the uh, with the reporting I want to get into at the end here, but to continue on that story, we see that John and Lois are kind of working together with like this seismology technology just to figure out what's going on, and just like the the, ra the ratings are off the charts and everything. It's cool. I really like that they're giving Elizabeth so much to do, because it's a Superman show. Essentially, it's a Superman show, but it's called Superman and Lois. And with that being the case, give Lois an equal part to do. You know, you can do all your fun, beaten up stuff with Superman. We get a nice scene where he's fighting some guys with guns and he kind of gets hurt because he has another headache. But give me the, the cool stuff with Lois where she's investigating, where she's figuring all this information out. and She's trying to be a good, more like mature figure for Natalie. And that connection's not really being made the way she wants it to or the way she's hoping it would. I like that connection a lot. I really like John's line where he's seeing just like Elizabeth, well, Lois sitting there. He's like, I'm trying to get through it and I will get through it. He has a glimpse of his version of Lois. Beautiful scene. Beautiful just homage to the way she turns around in both scenes to look at him. It's amazing. It was so cool to see that. I really like that story. So that is an introduction to a new character we are seeing here. Dr. Faulkner showing up to be that part of the story. We also see the side story with Jordan and John. There's an antagonist on the football team who's kind of like razzing on John for not being as strong as he is. It's like this bigger kid. I don't know if we've seen him in the first season. I can't remember. But basically, there's a shot where they're all working out like the boys are just working out in the gym. And this guy's just benching like 300. And John's like, how the hell is he doing that? That guy's got to be on roids or something. We also see that in the earlier scene when Superman was fighting this guy with the gun that took this like, X-Kryptonite to make him more powerful, he was selling it. So this guy was selling X-Kryptonite. Now, I'm not saying that this kid got X-Kryptonite, but I'm not going to be surprised because who else makes an appearance in this episode? It's Tag. Do you remember in the first season when one of their football friends just kind of got sick and he went away and then he got powers and he was super fast? Well, he's working for the DOD as one of these supermen. And you know what? His suit looks amazing. I think out of all three of those characters working for the DOD with the Superman logo, his suit looked the coolest. It just had like some really cool panache to it. And I really, really dug what we were seeing there. There's a really nice moment too where we see Clark talking to General Anderson. He's like, you don't want to be part of my task force? Fine. I don't really care, honestly. But if that's the case, I'm not going to be able to save you because I have real American missions to deal with here. If you're a man of the world like you say you are, I can't help you. So this is the freebie I'm giving you. But after this, you're on your own if anything happens to you like this again. And I think that's a nice moment. Again, there's a beautiful underlying tone of this story where America is appropriating the Superman logo. Such a present and just perfect idea of a modern story for Superman where it's like this logo means something. I think the government would try to corrupt it, and that's exactly what's happening. That is the world we live in, and that is super cool to see. I really like that story. All of this is working so well. Jordan, again, he has kind of his own side arc. He went to go fight Talaro and the thing. It worked really well. But before that, him and Sarah are having some tension. And I mentioned this in the last episode I talked about. I said, I think Sarah met somebody at camp. And that kind of culminates in two reasons. First off, we see Natalie goes to the school. Her and Sarah hit it off really well. They go to hang out after school, work on the car. This leads you to believe, and I called this right away. I was like, they're setting up a certain tension with Sarah. She's going to have done something with somebody else. I think the entire time she was interested in somebody else and she was. So we see her with Natalie. There isn't like a flirtatious thing going on there, but there's definitely vibes going off from each of them that they're enjoying each other's company. Natalie's a great character to see. I just thought she did super well in this episode, just having fun, fitting in right away. And I thought that was really cool. She, we see that Sarah reveals to Jordan. She did meet somebody else at camp. She actually kissed somebody at camp, this girl named Audrey. And I'm like, I knew it. I knew it was going to be a female, not because of anything like that. Just like, that's how you get to Jordan because he's like, I can't even compete with this person now. I think we're going to see Audrey appear on the show somewhere. That'd be cool to see. Great chemistry. We could see a Sarah, Natalie, Jordan thing going on. I don't know if that's the way it's going to go. I do like this more. If there is a Natalie, Sarah thing, I like that more than a Natalie, Jordan or Natalie, John thing. I, I think that's really good. Works well for me. There's also another subplot here again, setting up the story going forward. 
Lana Lang is now going to run. Well, Lana Cushing, I should say. My apologies. Lana Cushing is now going to run for mayor because Daniel Hart dropped out. He, had, he got a good job to support his family because we're going to take down that crusty old Gene Hackman looking mother effer, George Dean, which I got to imagine is a reference to, you know, George Reeves and Dean Cain. I don't know. Maybe that's just where my mind went to it. I don't know. I'm like, that's great. Get her. That's exactly what Lana should do. Run for mayor. What else is she going to do? That's perfect for her. It's a perfect place to put her in this world. I really did like that. I love Kyle's support because again, Kyle's the unsung hero of this show. Just fully supporting his wife, being the best girl boss husband he could be. I love it. I love him to death. But there was one final thing in this episode that we kind of knew was coming throughout the season that they mentioned. So as Lois is kind of like reporting on the seismic activity and all that stuff, there is an underlying theme that one of the persons on a podcast spoke about some old investigative journalism she did where some of her sources could have been lying and they weren't vetted and they are just pretending to be that. So now Lois's cre like entire credentials and her just everything about Lois is kind of being questioned now. Christy's like, you got to tell me who your source was that could potentially be dragging our name in the water. And we realized that the person was a part of this cult, was like just manipulated into doing these weird things that led to their overdose and potentially could have killed them. The person that Lois had as her source was her sister, Lucy. We know Lucy's coming to the show. And I'm wondering if this is going to be a subplot that we see going forward where maybe Lucy is going to be kind of against or maybe Lucy's still part of the cult and that cult's going to have something to do with the Doomsday stuff going forward. It could be anything. But I'm genuinely excited to see the Lois Lucy connection be made. That could be really fun. And I'm just adoring what this show is doing. Every new storyline it brought up I thought was really good. Every new relationship and connection it brought up was really good. The Superman stuff continues to be unparalleled. And the Tal Road journey in this episode was just super cool to see. I am seriously digging Superman and Lois, and this episode just set the stakes forward in a beautiful way. I cannot wait to see what's coming next, and I'm really digging what this show did. So that is my review of Superman and Lois, episode two of the second season. Now, thank you guys so much for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.